Uh, well, good morning and uh, thank you for uh, coming along to uh, this uh, announcement this morning. Uh, the venue has been chosen because it's in front of the uh, $20 million Latimer Hotel redevelopment, um, which has obviously occurred post uh, the earthquake. Uh, and also here on Latimer Square, which was the home for the USAR teams just uh, 18 months ago. Uh, and uh, indicates too the sort of uh, intrinsic beauty that Christchurch has uh, as its base to, to rebuild. So let me introduce to you first this morning uh, who we have here as well. I want to warmly welcome the Mayor and Mayoress, uh, the uh, Chief Executive of CERA uh, and the Operations Manager from CERA, Warwick Isaac. The reason we're here today is because the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act required the Christchurch City Council to produce a draft CBD plan uh, within nine months and to present it to uh, the Minister of Earthquake Recovery uh, for approval. I got that plan on the 21st of December and have since that time been considering uh, how we put life into that plan. And I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Bob Parker for uh, the timely way in which that plan was uh, put together, but also uh, the very democratic process that was used uh, to put that uh, draft plan uh, together. And I think he deserves great credit for doing it so swiftly, uh, but more importantly for putting together a plan that has captured the community's imagination uh, and that uh, has such widespread support. I also want to acknowledge the thousands of Canterbury people who gave their time, ideas and commitment to that process by participating in the uh, uh, structure that, uh, that Bob and his team put together. Uh, that plan is the basis for a way forward and it, it is not the least because it has such widespread community support. But when you have a good idea, which the draft plan is, you need a vehicle uh, that can deliver the required results in the most cohesive and efficient manner. In the draft central city plan it states, and I quote, because business as usual will not achieve the aspirations of the community or implement such an ambitious program in a timely manner that supports private sector investment, the council is open to establishing formal and informal partnerships to facilitate the coordination of activities across groups and maximise the effectiveness of financial contribution. In considering the approval of the plan, I've also considered how to give it life. To that end, I ask Roger Sutton, the Chief Executive of CERA, to exercise his powers under the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act to establish a new unit inside CERA with the initial task of developing a blueprint for the delivery of the plan. The new unit is to work collaboratively with the Christchurch City Council and draw on the expertise of council staff. So today we are here to announce the establishment of that new unit within CERA to be known as the Christchurch Central Development Unit. The Christchurch Central Development Unit will be responsible for the implementation of the Central City Plan that was prepared by the Christchurch City Council. It's our intention that Warwick Isaac, will, why, I'm sorry I should say, it's our intention that Warwick Isaacs will be the new director of that unit and he'll be leading, leading the unit from today. As you know, Warwick has been Roger's general manager for operations and he's responsible for uh, the deconstruction program in the city uh, the security of the cordon area and also has been a, a driver of the City Mall Restart project. I think it's fair to say that Warwick is a can-do sort of man who has got, gained the confidence uh, of many of the property owners in the city. He has more knowledge than most people, in fact I'd say anybody, about the condition of buildings inside the city and the program required to get into a redevelopment stage. He's worked tirelessly since the earthquakes on the February 22nd, having come from uh, his position as Chief Executive of the Timaru District Council uh, and taken up his roles here in Christchurch. That extensive local government uh, experience, I think, will equip him very well to lead this unit and work collaboratively with the Christchurch City Council. The announcement today marks the beginning of a new stage in the recovery of Christchurch after, those earthquake, after that February earthquake. We know that the full recovery of Christchurch will take many years, but international experience would suggest that we've got a window of about three years in which to gain confidence uh, and to ensure that people can see a recovery framework that is, is able to 
uh, gather momentum in a way that will see a speedy recovery. It's also very obvious that strong and clear leadership is needed to make sure that we get momentum and get that confidence. The scale of the development of the central city and the scale of reinvestment requires us to put in place extraordinary functions so that construction can take place in, an, in a coordinated manner. This is the role of the new unit, to facilitate, to coordinate and direct the development of the central city. To do this, Warwick and his team, including the Christchurch City Council and their planning staff, will prepare a redevelopment blueprint within the next 100 days. That blueprint will identify the location of anchor projects such as the building uh, of uh, stra uh, strategic city blocks. It will also identify how to streamline consent processes as well as look at land amalgamation uh, and see what else is required to support anchor, tenants, uh, anchor projects uh, and other large developments. The Christchurch City Council draft plan proposes a 14-day consenting timeline and how that is to be achieved will also be worked through at, at this, uh, alongside uh, the development of the blueprint. This process will create certainty and will create significant value for development and investment. The new unit will also undertake development and, inf and investment promotion both here in the city, throughout New Zealand and overseas. And finally, it will schedule and coordinate construction uh, once people respond to the plan. Our ability to establish the new unit and enter uh, this new phase of Christchurch recovery is in no small part due to the development of the draft central city plan by the Christchurch City Council. Volume 1 of the draft central city plan dealt with the vision for the city, its precincts, its distinctiveness, its heritage and its green spaces. Volume 2 of the plan was focused on changes to the district plan to realise the visions in Volume 1. We've decided to accept Volume 1, uh, but in the meantime put Volume 2 aside for a period because it will be premature, I think, to accept those rules uh, and, and it would be most appropriate to review those rules as the blueprint is developed over the next 100 days. Warwick's team will prepare the blueprint and, and assess anchor projects in consultation with strategic partners, the Christchurch City Council, other district councils, ECAN and Naitahu, and alongside those other government agencies. The blueprint will be based on the plan. We, keep, we wish to keep the integrity of the plan that has been so well considered by people in Christchurch. But like any good plan, which needs to be rolled out over a number of years, it needs to be flexible to meet changing needs inside the city. Two final points I'll make about how we're approaching volume one of the plan are around transport and financing. We've decided to put transport aspects of volume one to one side for the time being. Some transport proposals in the draft plan, such as the one-way, two-way street conversions, will require more detailed assessment to assure that they aren't negative imp uh, impacts on the wider transport network. It's vital that all transport options are considered in relation to the Greater Christchurch uh, area and this will be done over that time. While it would be clearly very nice to have the commuter rail service included in the draft plan uh, with a potential date out to 2032, uh, uh, needs greater consideration and needs to fit into the wider city transport needs as well. So that will also be considered inside the transport recovery plan. Also, today's announcement is not necessarily a commitment uh, to funding of all the projects in the plan. Remember that they were staged over a long number of years. But it will enable us to work more closely with the Christchurch City Council, who are working through their annual plan at the moment, uh, to ensure that funding gaps can be well understood and options for filling those gaps can be considered. Assessment of the project priorities and how they'll be funded is something the Council has got, as I said, underway through their draft annual plan, uh, but will be subject to further discussion as we develop the blueprint. I'm very pleased that key Council staff with their experience and skills will play a crucial role in the development units team. I've talked with Mayor Bob Parker extensively about this and Sarah at Senior Management Roger Sutton has spoken uh, with uh, Senior Management and the Council, Tony Marriott's team, 
about the involvement of Council in the development of that blue team. It will be a collaborative effort. The Council staff will be able to be seconded into the new unit to ensure a high level of uh, that collaboration and coordination. Sarah will develop a consultation plan that ensures that the people of Christchurch who have bought so heavily into the plan are kept up to date with how the blueprint is being developed. It's important, I think, to note that the Christchurch City Council remains the consenting agency for the redevelopment of the Christchurch uh, cent business, Central Business District and the Greater Christchurch area. To date, uh, we've seen a significant amount of demolition in the city. Of the 1,936 buildings in the CBD, uh, some 600 uh, have been demolished and there are many others under consideration for demolition. That process will continue. The challenge for redevelopment of the city is to build demand for commercial, residential and retail space while planning for that redevelopment to occur in a coordinated way that lives up to the vision expressed in the draft city plan. We believe the key to creating demand and for a coordinated redevelopment of Christchurch uh, is the providing of clarity and certainty about anchor projects. Those anchor projects will define the precincts described in the draft plan and if undertaken appropriately will stimulate demand and increase investor confidence in the rebuild. Those anchor projects can act as catalysts for surrounding areas and provide opportunities for smaller uh, hospitality businesses that provide cities with the life and vitality they need. A good example of an anchor project and the importance of a well sequenced and coordinated rebuild is the location and development of a convention centre. Hotel developers have indicated that they will invest uh, once they know the location of the convention centre uh, and can see a timeline for its construction. We have a, an incredible opportunity to develop a hotel precinct supported by world-class convention centre facilities uh, that together can act as a cornerstone for the rebuild of the city. Demand for office space I think would quickly follow that uh, and that in turn would have an effect on decisions made about retail opportunities and then you'll see the health sector and the tertiary sector able to work out their position inside the precincts plan. To achieve these benefits from anchor projects, the Christchurch Central Development Unit will need to identify location options, prepare design and development concepts, look at land amalgamation options, coordinate with other government departments who can invest in the development and promote and attract the development to potential investors in New Zealand and overseas. These anchor projects are crucial to the rebuild of Central Christchurch. They are exciting opportunities that will build the confidence of the people of Christchurch in their city, in our city, and the confidence of landowners and investors. To grasp these opportunities, we need to ensure that we use all the powers and resources available to us. Many of the developments will depend on the investment of other government agencies as funders and future tenants. Also, the development of the new Christchurch Stadium at Addington, which did use the powers under the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act, uh, provides a perfect example of what you can do when you use those, those powers, uh, you use those resources uh, and you set your mind to doing something. It shows that we can use the legislation for the CBD in a similar way to ensure that the right planning processes are in place for the recovery of the city. It's for all these reasons that we believe that Sarah and the Christchurch Central Development Unit is best placed to lead the redevelopment of the CBD. There will be some people concerned about uh, planning that they currently have for rebuilding efforts in the city. I would suggest that they take uh, a good look at uh, the, the announcement today and then work out whether or not they should hold off for 100 days, uh, a very short time, to ensure that they, their decisions are appropriate to the new city plan. Before I ask uh, Warwick to speak, I want to close by recognising the importance of the Christchurch uh, central, uh, sorry, I should say, I want to recognise the importance of the draft central city plan to providing the pathway forward. Mayor Parker and his councillors uh, and council staff work very closely with the community, as I said before, uh, and I believe that it has widespread community support, and that's a tribute to them. Uh, people support the idea of the precincts, they support the idea uh, of rebuilding the city in the central area here. 
They like the concepts of a green city, a distinctive city, a bustling, vibrant city that supports uh, both commercial activity, uh, arts and sports, uh, a city that supports the economic business hub for uh, the South Island. These ideas are good uh, and we need to put them in place with the best leadership team possible. In that vein, I expect Warwick and his team to work as partners with the Christchurch City Council on delivering the plan and to consult with the council and the community to retain support for the city plan. The announcement we have made today uh, and the need for the new collaborative working arrangements were envisaged in the central city plan and Bob Parker will speak to that shortly. I want to also indicate that I envisage the Mayor playing a very important role in the development uh, of the unit's work. Bob is a great communicator as you know, uh, a great ambassador for the City of Christchurch and a very important part of the unit's work will be ensuring that we do have investor confidence in the city. Some of that will require investment from outside of Christchurch, uh, from overseas. And uh, we, would, we would be calling on the talents and capabilities of Bob to ensure that uh, we have a program that does encourage that type of investment here in the city.